In this problem, I know the cosine of A, and I know A is in quadrant 2. I know the tangent of B, with B is in quadrant 3. And I need to find the exact value of the sine of A minus B without using a calculator. This means I'm going to have to go to one of my formulas, the sine of A minus B. And remember, the sine of A minus B is sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. So that's straight from the formula. In order to use this formula, I need to know the sine of A and the cosine of A. Unfortunately, I only know the cosine of A. I need to find the cosine of B and the sine of B. I only know the tangent of B. So I think what we need to do in each case is draw the angle in standard position and find x, y, and r for both angles. So we know that the cosine of A is negative 5 thirteenths. What is that in terms of x, y, and r? It is x over r, and we know A is in quadrant 2. So let's draw our angle in quadrant 2. Here's our angle A. I'm going to draw our little triangle. Here's x, here's y, and here's r. So we know x is negative 5. We know r is 13. And looking at the picture, should y be positive or negative? It's above the x-axis. It better be um, positive. So how are we going to find y? We're going to do x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So negative 5 all squared plus y squared equals 13 squared. 25 plus y squared equals 169. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. 169 minus 25 is 144, and we decided the y was going to equal the positive square root of 144, which is 12. So now we know that the, we were already given the cosine of a, but now we know that the sine of a is y over r, so that's going to be 12 thirteenths. So we now have no, know this and know this. Now we're going to do exactly the same for angle B. We know that the tangent of B is 15 over 8. And remember that in terms of x, y, and r is y over x. So we're going to draw a picture. And remember B is in quadrant 3. We always draw our triangle going up to the x-axis. And here is my angle B. Here's x, here's y, here's r. But now be careful in this case. Notice I go in this direction for x. So when I go left, x is negative. When I go down, y is negative. So both x and y have to be negative numbers. And th the reason I said be careful is because you're tempted here to say y is positive 15, x is positive 8, but they're both going to be negative. So y is going to be negative 15, and x is going to be negative 8. Guess how we're going to find r? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So negative 8 squared plus negative 15 squared is r squared. Negative 8 squared is positive 64. Negative 15 squared is 225. Add those together, we get r squared is 289. And remember, r is always positive. It's the positive square root of 289. So r is going to equal 17. So now I know that information, I now know that the sine of angle B is going to be y over r, so it's negative 15 seventeenths, 
and the cosine of angle B is X over R. X was negative 8, R was 17. So now I know both of these. So now we know everything we need for our formula. So remember the sine of A minus B is sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. And now it's just plugging in the numbers. What was the sine of A? Here's the sine of A. It is 12 over 13 times the cosine of B, negative 8 over 17. Minus, what was the cosine of A? That's the one we were given. It was negative 5 over 13 times the sine of B. What's the sine of B? The sine of B is negative 15 over 17. So the nice thing about this formula, it gives you a common denominator. So all we have to do is multiply the numerators. So I'm going to get 12 times negative 8 is negative 96. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And what's 5 times 15? I think that's 75. Over 13 times 17 is 221. And now all I have to do is add my two numbers in the numerator, and I get negative 171 over 221. So that is my answer. That is the exact value of the sine of A minus B. And when you're done, just look at this number. Put it in the calculator. The answer for the sine or the cosine of any angle has to lie between negative 1 and positive 1. Is that true in this case? Yeah, this number definitely lies between negative 1 and positive 1.